Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Painting of the Week. Some of you have been requesting that I do more paintings by American artists and um, this week I've decided to sort of meet you halfway. <laughs> this is a painting by a German-American artist but the theme that it depicts is obviously American. This is Washington Crossing the Delaware, an 1851 oil on canvas painting by as I said, the German-American artist Emanuel Lutz. This is a scene that I think is familiar to most uh, students of U.S. history, or hopefully to all Americans in general. This is a commemoration of Washington's crossing the Delaware River on uh, the evening of Christmas, actually, 1776. And as usual, I want to offer just a little bit of historical context to increase your appreciation and understanding of this work of art. 1776 is early in the American Revolution, and the Americans had successfully regained control of Boston from the British, but they were not faring very well in New York City. Winter was approaching, food was running out, shelter was scarce, and troop morale was down. Now, Washington, in the meantime, obviously is trying to, as the commander-in-chief of this army, is trying to win this war, and his troop support seems to be dwindling faster and faster. So what he does is Thomas Paine, who I think most people um, are at least somewhat familiar with, the author of Common Sense, came out with a new um, pamphlet, I guess you could call it, entitled The Crisis, which the opening lines, I think, are, are familiar to many of you. These are the times that try men's souls when the summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will, in this crisis, shrink from the service of his country. But he that stands it now deserves the love and thanks of man and woman. And it goes on and on. But Washington had this read to his troops the day after it was published, and it actually did a lot to increase troop morale, in addition to the fact that on Christmas Eve, the troops got uh, a lot more supplies, reinforcements arrived, and Washington decided that this was the perfect time to plan a secret attack on the, the Hessian, um, Hessian army that was residing in New Jersey. And this is what would eventually lead to the Battle of Trenton. The Hessians were German soldiers, I should mention, by the way, um, that were hired by the British Army. So they were fighting for the British, but they were, they were German soldiers. So let's now look more specifically at this painting now that we have a better appreciation of its historical context. I think the most important thing in this work is the lighting, right? There's this sort of unnatural brightness in the sky, and Washington's face very intimately reflects and captures this light. He's the centerpiece of this entire composition. Now, the sky isn't entirely bright, right? I mean, it's still pretty dark, which is consistent with the fact that it's still pretty early in the morning when uh, this crossing actually took place. And another, I think, amazing thing about this painting is the use of perspective. If you look at this almost interminable line of boats that move off into the distance and the foreshortening, which is um, a perspective technique that artists utilize when we're looking at something head-on. These boats seem to go on forever, and they create such a strong effect of depth in this painting, and they really emphasize the importance of Washington, who, as I said, is really the, the sign ashore, the central figure of this entire composition. And this line of boats really adds to that. It really creates that depth, and it makes it look like this entire army is stretching on forever down further on the Delaware River. The people in the boats themselves, actually, um, art critics have noted, represent a wide variety of the ethnicities that would have been present in the American colonies at this time. The man standing behind Washington, holding the flag, is actually Lieutenant James Monroe, who would later become the fifth president of the United States. One interesting historical inaccuracy, though, is that the flag that Monroe is holding actually is an anachronism. It wouldn't have... It, it wasn't designed until 1777, so that flag obviously would not have been present in the boat at the time of Washington's crossing the Delaware. Um, the river itself, too, is a little bit inaccurate in that the point where Washington's uh, troops actually crossed the Delaware River was not very wide. So in this painting, as I said, you see this, this line of boats going on for what looks like miles and miles down the river, and you can see the shoreline over on, on the left-hand side of the painting, but the shoreline on the right... You can maybe just catch a glimpse of it over on the, the right side of the painting, but the point where Washington and the Continental Army actually crossed the Delaware was not that wide, and you can actually visit the spot. 
My favorite thing, though, in this painting is how it is such an excellent blend of neoclassicism and romanticism, two different artistic movements or styles that we've talked about um, in many other painting of the weeks. The idealized pose of Washington as, as like a Greek or a Roman warrior, of course, not realistic, right? This isn't realism. Washington probably would not have stood <laughs> in the boat like that as they were crossing the river, um, especially since this was sort of a logistically challenging, challenging mission uh, crossing this river in the, in the middle of the winter. But this kind of heroic, as I said, Greek or, or Roman warrior pose, I think, heightens the excitement of the painting, the emotional quality, and reminds us of the virtue of the ancient Greeks and Romans and their, their skill in fighting. In addition to that, the cooler colors that you see used in this painting, a, a lot of blues, a lot of kind of dusky whites, are also very typical of neoclassicism. But we do see a lot of highlights here and there of red, and red is sort of the hallmark color of Romanticism. We see these brighter highlights of red, this powerful, um, maybe we could call it phantom lighting, light that really doesn't come from anywhere, and especially the clouds. Notice particularly the placement of the clouds. We have these dark, kind of ominous, pretentious looking clouds over on the right hand side of the painting, but on the left, that's where the light is coming from, that's where the brightness is. So if we think about this painting metaphorically, we see Washington and his army moving out from underneath the clouds of darkness and defeat and despair into the light and into the brightness of their country's future.